This tutorial is for educational use only. It is not authorized nor approved for any other use. We made it to the finish line. Net to death. First of all, congratulations, because you stick all the way to the end. This was not an easy, easy tutorial. This was quite difficult. I'm not saying difficult, it's quite tricky to understand all the math behind the DeFi Master Chef smart contract. But I want to congratulate you for sticking around all the way to the end, okay? So in this final tutorial video, what we are going to do, as we know on this channel, every time that we do any tutorial regarding smart contracts and blockchain, we will build a front end. So let's go ahead and connect the MasterChef smart contract to a web front end so then users can log in and perform activities in the DeFi staking pool. So we will have all of our pools displayed in the web front end and users can stake tokens in pool zero. You stake into the R tokens, you earn into the R tokens or pool number two, USDT, stake USDT, and end to the R. But for that, we need to do a couple of things. We have to build a function that allows the user to stake and unstake, auto compound, and also another function that is going to provide the information regarding a particular pool so then we can display the details to the end user. So for example, how many tokens has the user staked on X pool, okay? So we have to provide that information so the user knows how many tokens they have, how many rewards have they earned. And that information will be rendered in real time, which means that I am going to be building a set interval, a very simple set interval that is going to be calling that get pool information every five seconds, okay? It's just gonna be calling that endlessly every five seconds and update the information live in the front end and the user will have real-time live information of the staking activity. The user is going to be able to see how many tokens have staked so far in the pool, what is the total reward amount that they earn, okay? If they want to perform any actions on the pool, they just need to click open pool and go ahead and perform the function that they want to, stake on stake or auto compound. With auto compound, it's going to be a little bit tricky because we have to make sure that we provide the button to do auto compound, but only for pool zero. Remember, auto compound means I am going to be allowing the user to restake the earnings back onto the pool. The pool has to allow the token that I'm paying as a reward to be restaked. It's the only pool that allows that to happen is pool zero, else we're not gonna be able to do that. So for that, I have to make sure that I only provide the button functionality to pool zero, and we'll do that. It's gonna be very fun. It's gonna be very simple using Next.js. No brainer. Alrighty, here we go. Let's go ahead and let's build the web front end and complete this masterpiece. Let's do it. Okay, okay. Let's do the follow. I want to do one last thing to the contract, five minutes, and we'll go on to the front end. What we are going to be basically doing is building another contract. Don't worry, we're not gonna do another one hour video. It's going to be a quick contract. So instead of me sending the reward tokens that I mint back onto the token smart contract, I realized that it's better to have a contract that will hold the tokens instead of the same ERC20 token smart contract. That's not going to be a clean design. I am going to build another contract that is going to do that. It's just going to hold the tokens. It's like a wallet okay and we will mint tokens the tokens will be sent instead of us sending the tokens back to the ERC20 tokens smart contract and, and store them there. We're going to be sending them to another contract that is just going to hold the tokens. It's very straightforward. We have to do minimal changes, okay? So check this out. So I have the ERC20 tokens smart contract. You know, you are very aware of this and to the R token, right? contract. So we have the into the art token smart contract. We got the master chef. Okay. We're going to add a third contract that is going to be the into the art pay. It's a contract that is going to hold tokens only. Okay. So the scenario is as follows. I stake or unstake tokens, right? The moment I claim the reward, we know that the master chef contract is, is just going to send the request to the token smart contract to mint those tokens. Instead of me telling the end to the yard to deposit the tokens on the same contract, on the same token smart contract, right? We're not gonna do that. Instead, we are going to tell the token smart contract to send those tokens to the end to the yard pay contract. That's it. 
the moment someone decides to unstake or stake, when we do the payout, we are going to request that safe end to the R transfer function that we coded. Instead of me sending the request to the end to the R token smart contract to tell, hey, send the tokens to this wallet, to the staker wallet. Instead, I'm going to tell the end to the R token smart contract via that function to request, right? The end to the R pay contract to send the tokens. Okay, so the safe end to the R transfer function is going to be pointing to the pay contract, not the end to the R token. We are just going to make that change and that's all. And the reason why we want to do that is because we don't want to hold the tokens on the same token smart contract. Instead, I was thinking like, mm, we should not be doing that. We should be doing it's having a separate contract that it's going to hold the tokens. That's all. And the end to the R pay contract is just going to send the tokens to the staker. Okay. So those are my payout tokens, my reward tokens. Okay. What I've earned from the staking. Okay. That's all. Okay. Let's do it real quick. I am going to do the following. So this is the master chef smart contract that you can find on the GitHub in part five. Um, I am going to make another contract. Let's do a new file here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Let's call this end to the R pay soul. Okay. And it's super simple. All I have to do, I am going to be adding most of the items that I already have on the, under the end to the rewards, but I'm going to be calling the end to the rewards from the end to the R pay. Okay. So what I want to do, you know me, I love to copy and paste and I'm just going to paste it here. This is the token smart contract. So we are going to be doing a couple of things. We no longer need all this because we're going to be um, importing the token smart contract here. So I'm going to safely remove this. I am going to remove the ERC, the safe math and only the ownable and access control. Okay. And I am going to be importing my into the R token smart contract here. And we're just going to say into the rewards sold. That's the name of my token smart contract. Awesome. So now I am going to be changing the name here to be, let me just zoom in. There you go. That's better. I'm going to change the name here to and to the R pay. And we are not going to use ERC 20, ERC 20 burnable, only ownable access control. I don't need this really. I'm, I'm just going to make a, I'm literally making a wallet. That's all I'm doing. Beautiful. So that's good. I don't need to have the balances, right? Because we're not going to be uh, minting tokens from here. This is just a store which means that I don't need this ERC20 interface. I don't need the mint. All I need to have is the address of the end to the reward. So we have to declare this public. So I am going to bring that into the rewards contract. And the easiest way that I can do that is by going to the master chef contract and getting the information there. So I already have it here into the rewards. I want to copy that, go to end to the pay. I'm going to initialize here. I'm going to add this here. Okay. And in order for me to initialize this address of this contract, obviously I imported the contract itself. Now I have to enable it under the constructor. So when we have the constructor, we got to make sure that we have this ability here, but I'll take care of that in a bit. I am going to add that here. I'm going to initialize it here. So you want to see how it looks? It's just going here. This is what we need to do. We have to copy this. We got to go here. And this is actually inside here. So I'm going to say master chef. Okay. I'm going to just paste that. That's the only thing that I need to initialize. I am going to now invoke this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go here. Okay. And uh, that's about it. To be honest, that's it. Anything else that I might be missing? No, that's it. Okay, cool. Now I have to do the following before I was looking in the safe end to the R transfer function. I was looking at the balance of my contract. In this case, the token smart contract, we are going to be changing that. Instead, I am going to be calling it end to the R this is the token smart contract. I am invoking the token smart contract. Then I'm calling this particular function balance of address. What's the address that I need to work with this address. In this case, this is the address that I need to obtain the balance, which is the end to the R pay, which now I should be able to obtain the amount of tokens that I'm holding in this end to the R pay contract. 
all I have to do, it's, uh, you know, verify that I have the right balance, that I have the amount. So if the if amount it's higher than my balance on this contract, then transfer that. Two will be provided by the MasterChef contract. So two will be the staker's wallet. And that's how we pay the staker. And also that's how we pay the developer. So the developer address is also paid this way. Okay. Once I have this, once I have this enabled and I obtain the amount of tokens, then I have to invoke the token smart contract transfer function so that I can transfer from my contract onto the wallet, onto the staker's wallet, right? What I'm going to be invoking here is going to be importing that contract. Then I'm going to call that function, right? So I want to say N to the R transfer, N to the R transfer, and we'll press, there you go. Awesome. It compiled, good to go. Okay, so we're done with the interface. So now we have this contract that we can store the tokens here, the, the tokens as we mint them from the MasterChef contract. First, I have to now add this contract onto the MasterChef contract, right? Because we're going to be doing that interaction. Go to the MasterChef contract. And now we already have this end to the rewards, which we are definitely going to be working with. Now I have to also import the new contract that I just built. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to copy here. I'm going to call this end to the R pay. That's the file name, right? And now I can invoke that here end to the R pay, right? And it's exactly the same name. You can see it here. And this will be end to the R pay. Okay. Now let's look at the references where I have to call this address. Okay. I also have to definitely um, add it here. So I'm going to copy this. Let's say into the R pay. I should be doing it from the pay contract, right? So I already have the values there. Into the R pay, into the R. Now I'm just going to do this. Paste. And now we're going to call this and to the R pay and to the R pay. Beautiful. Awesome. I did that done. Now I have to do one last thing and we are done. We have to find the section that we are going to be calling the safe and to the R transfer and change that. So then it starts pointing to the end to the R pay and that's it. And also the mint, we have to send the tokens to this new contract. And here we go. Under the update pool is where we mint the reward tokens. We are going to be changing the second, the, the second mint function here to mint, not send them to the token smart contract. Now it's going to be to the end to the RPA. Okay. That's good there. Beautiful. And now finally I have to do the same thing here. So now I am going to be, instead of me asking the token smart contract to transfer the tokens that it's state or it's deposit on the token smart contract, we're no longer doing that. Now I have to call this pay because from that contract is where we're going to be transferring the payout to the staker. That's it. That's all we have to do. If we control S awesome. So now let me go ahead and deploy this. We're going to deploy this real quick. So the first thing I'm going to deploy is the end to the rewards. Obviously, why? Because I am going to be asked to provide that address on the other contracts. Okay, so let me go ahead and deploy this first. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change myself to my wallet. Deploy, pay, confirm. We're going to have the first contract. Beautiful. We got the first contract. Awesome. As we get the contracts, we have to we have to um, save those addresses. Okay, so we have to work with those addresses. So now I am going to be deploying the end to the R pay. So let me go ahead and control S again. And I am going to be deploying. And now you can see that it's asking for the end to the R address. Obviously, now we are going to copy the end to the R address that we just deployed. We're going to be deploying the smart contract. Beautiful. We deployed the smart contract. Now we have the end to the R pay. Now when we go to the master chef, it's going to ask for both the end to the R rewards and the end to the R pay. Okay. So we're going to go to the master chef and we are going to compile. Awesome. And you can see it right there. Okay, so now let's provide the token smart contract address, which is the end to the year rewards and the end to the R pay. So now this is the end to the R pay and that's it. Now we are going to add the developer address, you know, that's the developer wallet and the end to the R per block. Let's build the staking pool or the staking farm to mine two tokens, per, no, three tokens per block. Okay, so let's do that. So I want to say three and then you got to add 18 zeros. Okay, we added 18 zeros, three tokens mined per block, three N to the R's. Star block, let's find the star block. I am deploying this on Sepolia. So the last block, it's this value right here. So let's just 
grab this value you can see here let's go back we're gonna add the star block and we're gonna do a multiplier of three let's just do a multiplier of three and this will be the multiplier bonus and we will transact and sure enough and now we got the master chef smart contract we will deploy one last contract is the fake usdt then we'll have the second pool okay and we will be done so the master chef contract is, has been deployed now we're going to be deploying the usdt pool I am going to do the following. I can either do this, right? I'm just gonna create a new file. We're gonna call this USDT soul. And now I'm just gonna copy my entire entity rewards, copy and go here, paste. This will be quote in the USDT. So I'm just gonna label this USDT and we will just say USDT pattern. And we're gonna say USDT, beautiful. And the only thing that I need, I don't need this function because this is quote, not the contract for the staking pool. This is the, and this is the USDT contract. Other than that, um, yeah, that's good. It's just a sample contract. Beautiful. So it has been compiled. Let me go ahead and deploy it. I'm going to deploy that. Boom. Here we go. Okay. So we got all four contracts. The first thing we're going to do, let's build the second pool, which is going to be the USDT. We know that when we deploy the master chef, the first pool is the end to the rewards. Uh, the, the second pool is going to be USDT. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to add it here. So this will be the liquidity pool token and the allocation point. Let's set 2000, right? So like, you know, um, 20%, but again, this is a variable. This will vary as we add more pools. I'm going to say true and we are going to transact. True means that I'm going to be updating all the pools. So if there was any activity, just update it. In this case, we don't have anything. It's brand new. Okay, but eh, it doesn't matter. Okay, true. Awesome. Now we have the second pool. Now the other thing that I have to do is the following. I get to add the master chef contract to control the end to the RPA so then it can transfer the tokens and also control the end to the rewards. So it has the right to mint tokens. Okay, so we are going to copy this address. And now we're going to head first to the end to the RP and we are going to grant the role to the master chef contract. So we're going to paste the master chef contract address here. We're going to go under the manager role. We're going to copy that. We're going to add that role here and we are going to transact. Okay. And sure enough. Awesome. So we have added the master chef contract role onto the end to the RPA so it can successfully call and send the payout to the stakers. We're done with the end to the RPA. Now let's do the same thing for the end to the rewards. And we are going to find grand hole. There we go. And we are going to, first of all, get the manager role, right? From this contract. I'm going to add it here. And now we are going to find the master chef contract address. Here we go. And we're going to say address account transact. And sure enough, we are done with all the contracts. Beautiful. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to mint into the rewards. I'm just going to mint. I'm just going to mint 500,000. Uh, so let me convert that real quick here. 500,000 into the rewards on my wallet. So I'm going to go ahead and mint. I'm going to say 500,000. We're going to send that to my own wallet. We are minting into the R. So I got 500 thousand tokens minted 500,000 and to the rewards and now let's mint USDT so let's do the same thing I am going to be sending to myself and let's just do the same or let's do 400,000 so I'm just gonna copy 500 and we are going to mint 400,000 here and we're gonna transact and now we should have both end to the rewards and USDT beautiful now let's do the following because we're gonna be using this I am going to build the next JS web application, the web front end. And then we're going to bring the contracts that we are going to be interacting with onto the next JS instance. Okay. So let's go there. I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say MPX create next app and let's call this DeFi farm. Okay. And we're going to press enter and I am not going to use TypeScript. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Lint no tailwind with this one. We're not going to use the source directory app router. It's saying that it's recommended. Okay. Here's the thing. I haven't done a tutorial to work with the app router or work the, with the new Next.js layout. I don't want to get you lost. So what I'm going to do, I am going to say no, but we are definitely going to do a video on how to use the app router and now how to properly structure your Next.js app. Okay. We're going to say no for now. And 
no customized default import alias and that's it okay beautiful okay so we are done here now if we navigate to that folder so we say defi farm clear now i need to install dependencies so let's do the following let me bring virtual studio code and i'm going to show you what dependencies do we need and again i'm going to be providing all this on my GitHub and sure enough, I'm gonna trust this. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to be installing dependencies. So we are going to head onto the package JSON and I am going to bring the dependencies and let's break it down real quick. Okay, let me just replace that with the ones that I have here. So we're gonna be using Bootstrap for styling all the UI components and we are keeping the same Yes, Lint, React, but now we are going to be adding eaters. We are going to be adding, oh, next is part of it. Like we are not changing this, React, we're not, not dumb. And we are going to be adding the font. This is the Apple font, but here's the new kid on the block. VM, it's not the new kid, but it's been adopted. Uh, so VM, it's another module that is used to do Web3 interaction with wallets or Web3 calls. It's basically an API that allows me to call Web3 functions and interact with the browser wallet or any other RPC HTTPS connection to your wallet. Okay, so I'm going to say S, control S, and now I should be able to head back onto my console. Terminal, we're gonna say MPMI, okay? That is just going to update whatever I install. Make sure that you save the package JSON file. Okay, so we are done with the dependencies. Now we are going to head over the pages. Let me go ahead and expand this a little bit. I am going to be creating another folder inside my project folder. And this folder name is going to be called components. Okay, inside components, we're going to be building the configuration file and we're going to be importing the ABIs. We have to import the smart contract ABI for the MasterChef contract and also the token smart contract ABI. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna say config JS. I'm gonna say const, and I'm going to declare MasterChef here. I'm gonna call this uh, MasterChef address, and now I can bring that contract address here. Okay, so let me copy the MasterChef, okay. Beautiful, so let's save this, okay? Now I am going to be bringing the two ABIs. I'm gonna be bringing the ERC20 ABI and also the MasterChef contract ABI, okay? So I'm gonna make two files. First file is gonna be ERC20 ABI JSON. And then the second one is going to be the MasterChef JSON. And this will be the MasterChef ABI. Okay, let's import the ABI. So let's go first here and let's find the master chef. Okay, there we go. Copy the ABI, save. We have the master chef contract ABI, beautiful. Now let's do the same thing with the ERC20 ABI, which is a token smart contract. And I'll go here and copy the ABI of the token and paste it here and done. We got both master chef and ERC20 ABIs. We're good here. Okay, awesome. Now here it's the front end, finally. We are going to do the following. The first thing I'm gonna do, I am going to be modifying the app. I'm gonna go a little bit quick on the styling and all that because the focus is to connect the MasterChef contract. I wish I could like dedicate to the front end, but the, the styling and all that, but that's not particularly this tutorial is for, okay? The first thing I'm going to do, I am going to make sure I can see the web front end and then we will work with the functions and all that, okay? So for that, I'm gonna go very quick on this. I am going to be adding all the styles. So I got a couple of files that I have to work with. First, I'm gonna remove the ones that are default here. So I'm gonna say delete, delete, I'm gonna say delete. And now we're going to bring the ones that I have already built. Let's say styles, when I paste, I have a different CSS uh, class name that I'm going to be creating the different styles and whatnot. Like it's, again, it's not the focus on of the tutorial is to do the styling, it's to show you how to interact with the smart contract. Okay, so I got, you know, I got a model because we're going to be doing a pop-up model CSS. 
and we are going to be doing a another like styling on the stake function itself and all that okay it's all ui ux we are going to be adding the logos so the logo files we need those logos files okay control v paste okay awesome so we added the polygon logo my into the r vanner this is a video animation that you are going to see at, at, at the splash page or the beginning of the page or the index you're going to see that the animation video um, and that's it. And the USDT logo for the pool. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and load the app. And now I can invoke, I can import the CSS in the app. So now I can use that across all the application. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this a little bit because we have to work with bootstrap. I am going to be invoking bootstrap here so I can initialize bootstrap and use the components across the application. Okay. So I'm going to say use effect. So what this is going to do, and by the way, I have to invoke use effect. So I'm going to say import use effect. There we go. What this is going to do is going to initialize bootstrap on my project and I can use the styling and whatnot. Okay. So here's what we are going to do next. I am going to be building a nav bar. So I am going to be showing a nav bar and it's going to include the connect button. Okay. So let's do that. I have to wrap my component. This is basically the Next.js rendered component, uh, the application being rendered. So this is where it is being returned once it gets compiled and rendered by the browser. Okay. So for that, I'm just going to remove this instead. We're just going to add all this. So let me explain to you real quick. Very simple. Uh, it's just a container with some styling. Again, we have a header here. Background is dark. This is all bootstrap stuff. I have an A reference, right? That is just pointing to the logo of the application. Okay. That basically it's just being pulled from my GitHub. Uh, so it's just going to be rendered that way. Um, and I got the stake link. So it's just going to be the first tab or the first page in the nav bar. You can keep adding pages here. You know, you can just keep adding, copying and pasting below here and you're going to have different sections on the nav bar and we're just going to control S. Uh, let's take a look and see if this renders successfully. Okay. So I'm going to say NPM. Let's run the project. I am going to open my browser and let's take a look at that. So we are going to be initializing the page by calling export default function and let's call this declare this function to be farms this is just going to hold the staking farm now under here i can bring the html components which i am going to show you right now i'm going to paste this here and let's let me break it down to you again this is all the html styling for this application and we are going to be enabling this function here right initialize the function and then we are going to declare this model and that's how we are going to say require bootstrap again this is all styling and constant now we are going to be calling my model i'm just going to say my model and now i can bring the dom element that is named stake i'm going to show you right here stake model okay so this is the dom element that is going to be called invoked by the show model function okay we are going to declare the new model and we are going to now invoke that id and we're going to say stake model okay and now i can effectively show the model i'm going to say my model and i'm going to say show and i think that's it okay so let me save this now I have a button that opens the model and the button it's show model. And this button right here is called open pool. Okay. When we call show model, which is what I just declare right here, you're going to see it right there. It's going to open the model and it's going to show the pool. So I'm going to control S and let's go back. And hopefully I realize that I haven't exported this function. Oh, I think I see what's going on. Oops. It's return. And we have to return this HTML code. Okay. Um, there we go. Now let's take a look and see. Beautiful. Okay. Awesome. So that was it. Okay. Let me show you when I imported the nav bar, I did not return the HTML. So you are not going to run into that issue. I'm going to show you right now. I am going to show you that I was missing the return statement. That's why we were only seeing the blue screen, but we were not seeing anything HTML related because I was not actually returning it. Duh. Okay. Awesome. Let's continue. Okay. Now if we go under 
the information. Now we should be able to even open the model. Let's give it a shot. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So we got the model open. Everything is looking so far so good. We got stake. Now the idea is the following is we have to be able to provide different pools. So that means that I have to render individual models on the front end. Okay one per each pool, which is going to have different values. It's going to have the staking values are going to be different, you know, from pool one to pool two, which means that once I open the pool, I have to make sure that I'm opening the pool for the right model or for the right pool. Else we're not going to be able to see the right information. Every pool that we add onto the smart contract, we also have to make sure that I have each pool now auto created. This card component should repeat. Okay. Now, if we go under the project, I am going to be building like an index where I can populate the information per model. Yeah, don't worry. I might be sounding strange, but you are definitely going to get it. Okay. So let me show you this. I'm going to do the following here. If you want to see the model. So this is where we initialize that model right here. And inside that, that's this div. We are going to be adding all the information where we're going to be adding the images. We're going to be adding, you know, logos, all the information, right? Inside here is where we are going to be populating the information from the smart contract. You're staking. This will be the amount of tokens that you're staking, your earnings, multiplier, and in your wallet. So all that will be populated here, but we have to provide this information from the master chef contract. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to build a component. It's just going to be another component. It's going to be literally the index of all my pools with all the logos that I need to be using for each. And we are going to be building a map that is going over this array that we are going to write that is going to grab all those values and it's going to be displaying the values on the web front end. It's very cool and it's very easy to manage and work with. Okay. So we're going to call this uh, pool DB. If this is a small database, it's going to be pool DB JS. And we are going to be exporting a constant. It's going to be pool DB. And now I can initialize this array, right? We're going to open the array. And now we are going to be creating the first pool, which is also a JSON structure. It's a JSON object. Now inside here, I am going to be declaring values. Okay. The first key element is going to be LP token. This is the token that I'm going to be allowing to, to be staked. Okay. So LP token, I am going to be adding the symbol of the token that I'm going to be allowing to stake. Next item, I am going to be adding the reward token. Okay. And I am going to be adding the symbol of that token, which is also going to be into the R that you can see now the item that I'm going to be populating is pool zero. So we want to do this in order because that's how Next.js is going to be rendering every single value and providing the right information to the right module. Okay. So now the liquidity pool token and the reward token have been added here. Now I'm going to be adding the logo. So I'm going to declare this. LP logo. And all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be referencing Next.js to the file name that it has to load. So then it shows the logo. Okay. So I'm going to say into the R PNG. If we go under the public folder, you are going to see into the R here. This is the logo that I want to show on the pool. So if we go back to pool DB, I am going to be showing that for my liquidity pool token logo. And now the RWD logo or RW logo is going to be the same. Again, this is the, the first pool is it's allowing me to stake the same tokens and earn the same tokens. Okay. Now here's the thing without a compound, I can use the styling to disable the button that I don't want the pool to have the capability to do auto compound because the pool is not capable of doing auto compound. Okay. And we talked about this. So I am going to do the following. This is going to be the class name that I'm going to be adding to the model that is allowed to do auto compound. Okay. So when we render the pools and we render the models, the first model, it's going to be this one. This is the one that we are going to be allowing to stake and to do auto compound. What I'm going to do, I'm going to call this, check this out, auto compound class. Let's just abbreviate this, right? And we are going to say the following. This is bootstrap. Don't worry. Don't worry if you don't understand this. Well, if you want to use bootstrap, you should worry, right? But again, this is a strictly a bootstrap class styling component. This is how to declare a button. Now we're going to say button and it was medium and button now is success. 
This is the, the, the class component in Bootstrap. If you want to know more about this, so we go here and now we go to docs and we go to the components. We can go to buttons and you are going to see it there. You can see button. That's the name of the component. And we mentioned button success. The color success is green. That's the color that we're going to be adding to this button. Okay. But again, this all information, you can go to Bootstrap and look at the docs and you should be able to you know, figure it out. Okay. Okay. Let me go back. Button success. Okay. Awesome. So that means that is green and I can do the opposite for the button that is going to be disabled with button color red. Okay. So when it renders, it's going to show red button and we should be typing something to tell the user that, Hey, this is not allowed. And now, we are going to say auto compound this key name. It's going to show the name or the, the what we want to label that button with. Okay. So in this case, let's call this button auto compound. Okay. Beautiful. And we have finished with the first one. So I'm going to say comma because we're going to add another one. Okay. Now that we have this first one and I add another one. Okay. Now this one is going to be the USDT. So this is the second pool. Okay. So we're going to say USDT. And the reward token is still going to be into the art. Now the liquidity pool logo is going to be the USDT logo. Okay. So I just need to change that name here. Okay. We changed the name. The reward logo is still going to be there uh, into the art. Now the auto compound button class, we are going to change the color to be, uh, what's the red color? Let's go back danger. So I have to label this to be danger. Okay. Let's do that. Say danger. Okay. Now, the label of the uh, or the name of the button is going to be auto compound unavailable. Okay. Now this is going to be shown on the button and it's just going to show danger and whatnot. Okay. It's going to show the red color. I mean, and yeah, that's it. This is quote the list of information that we are going to be rendering in the front end. Cool. So let's bring that and let's test it out. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to invoke that. I'm going to import import pool db and now we brought that constant or that object onto the index page now i can build a map and i can call each individual value based on what i have here okay so let's check this out this is going to be very cool i am going to head over the model because again i want to show this for both the front card let me show here let me show the card so as we keep adding more entries onto that array that we just built, we're going to create multiple cards. It's going to be one card per each entry. Okay. Same goes with the model. We are also going to be generating a new model per car, which individual values. So let me show you right now what we're going to do here. We're now going to initialize the map. This is how we start generating entries per pool DB. Okay. Or we start generating those objects per pool DB entry. Okay. This will be zero. This will be one and such. Okay. So check this out. This is very cool. So we are going to say below this video, we're going to, uh, bring that pull DB array here. We're going to say pull pull DB map. Okay. That's how we can start looking or reading every single entry. Okay. Clear this. And now let's bring the data from the map. Okay. This is how we bring that data from the map. And this is the index or the number of entries that we have in this array. Okay. This will be the, the information and this will be the number that we are calling per entry. Okay. This is how we invoke per entry. And now we are going to say the following. We are going to now start the fun part. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open here and now I can effectively do this. I can grab this, cut it, and now I can close it at the end of this ends. Okay. So I have to add it right below here. Boom. And you can see the error went away. And sure enough, now I can effectively render per key. Okay. So per key, it's the amount of render components that I'm going to be showing on screen. So check this out. This is cool. I'm going to say diff. We are going to now call the key element, right? And we are going to be calling I. This is the amount or the number that I'm going to be duplicating this information. Okay. If I control S, okay. If I control S, I should have two. Okay. Check this out because that's what I have. I have two entries inside this array. So with that, I'm going to go back and see how that goes. And there we go. Awesome. So we got now two, but you can see there's no information populated yet. 
But let's fix that. Let's add the logos. Okay. All we have to do is call the key, call the data, and then look for the um, key name. Okay. In this case, it's going to be the LP logo and the RW logo. Okay. So let's go back and let's do that. Okay. So you can see here, this, here's the section in that card that is going to bring that element in. So stake into the yard. So now what I can do here, I can say stake and I'm going to be calling that first option. It's going to be data dot LP token, right? That is the name of the token that I'm going to be allowing to stay. This is the data. This is how we call it. You know, we grab the data and from there we're grabbing this particular entry. But remember key I, well, this will be the one and then it goes again and does the second and then does the third. So it keeps giving me all that information. And now earn, what's the, the name of the, uh, Earn token is going to be reward token. And we can see it right here. There we go. If we now save this and go back, there we go. Stake into the art and into the art. Stake USDT, earn into the art. If we go back onto my pool database, that you can see here, the first entry will be those two. The second entry will be those two. You see how cool this is? Awesome. Now let's add the logo. Okay. Let's add the logos right here. It's going to show both uh, token logos right here. Same way. Instead of us calling the name, we're going to be calling this key element and it should display it. So now we got the two images. You can see image one and you can see that uh, forward slash uh, as you saw in the front end and then the second image. All we have to do is call source, right? And now we are going to once again call data. And now I got to get the liquidity pool logo. This will be the first token, the token that I'm going to be allowing to stake. And now we're going to go over source data again, and we are going to be calling the reward logo in this case. Okay. Control S. Let's take a look again. Beautiful. Awesome. 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 Okay. Let's continue. I'm going to continue doing everything so that we can move forward fast. Okay. Now what it's going to happen is the following. Oh, by the way, let's go to the model. Let's see how the model looks. You can see in the model, we don't have information yet because we still have to populate those details. So let's do that now. What I'm going to do, go back, let's get to the model. This is the model. You can see it right here. And now it's asking. So as you can see stake, if you go back to the model, let's see if I can do this. Hopefully I'm not in the way. I just wanted to, to show you this. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to look for the stake and you can see it right here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to source, right? And we are going to say, once again, data. The stake token is going to be the liquidity pool to logo. And now the second image, it's going to be source the same. It's going to be source. And now it's going to be data. And this is, will be reward logo. If we control S, boom, that was cool. That was cool, huh? Awesome. So now we can see both, you know, the, the credit pool token and the reward token right here. Beautiful. Awesome. So now I have to add the auto compound button. You can see that I already have the stake on stake. They're, you know, statically declared. Now the auto compound button is right here. So let's fix that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say once again, data, right? I'm going to say auto compound. This will be the name of the button. So if we press save, you can see auto compound right here. Okay. Beautiful. So now we're getting that information as we should. Let's add the bootstrap styling that we added. So if we go back onto the pool database, you can see that we have some, um, some bootstrap uh, HTML classes. So let's bring that and we should see the colors per button. Okay. So if we go back here, now we're going to go to the button and we're going to invoke once again, this time it's going to be the class name, but instead of me invoking it manually, we're just going to call data. And now we are going to be invoking the auto comp class. And this is going to be providing the HTML styling. Boom. Awesome. Now we can see the name and the style. If we go to the second model, let's take a look at that. Huh? You can see it's the same. It's not actually rendering the right information. Why is that? It's because each model has a unique DOM element. I cannot be calling the same DOM element. Remember stake model? This is what I declared up here. Okay. Which means now I have to be passing an ID or a number so then it can render each unique model. Else it's just going to render one, this one, the first one. That's it. Nothing else is not going to care about the other IDs. Okay. 
So what I got to do now, I'm going to do the following. Check this out. I'm going to grab this, right? This is the stake model. Let's delete that. And instead, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to still name, name this stake model. But now I'm going to be passing the key ID. Now this will be added stake model zero, stake model one, stake model two, stake model three. Okay. Now that I am enabling this, now I have to go here. I'm going to be adding that value here. Okay. Check this out. Now, when I call open pool, I have to make sure that I'm passing also the key I, the key value. Okay, so I'm going to be passing I, but when I click on open pool, I should be passing that value there so that it can render the value right here, or it can call that particular model and build that model DOM element, right? So with that said, I have to do here. So what you see, show model, now I have to be passing that I value, okay? So check this out. I have to do the following. I am going to be passing this, right? Now we're going to say show model. But now I am going to be passing that I here, which means that the number that you generated the button for each, you know, for each card, we are passing that number also here. So then I can reference this ID here. Okay. And we're going to say plus I now effectively when I press open pool, I can show you right here. Let me show you when I press open pool, it's opening pool, but it's sending the number of this card that we render based on the pool database to the model so that it can find the right model and show it to me. Okay. So let's go back. So if I go here, I'm going to control S if we go back now, we should have the right one. So we are now effectively adding the DOM element. It's going to be generating each DOM element independently. So go back and now you can see all we want to see. Okay. Now you can see other compound unavailable and now it's the second pool. Why that happened? Because we are now passing the right DOM ID for every single entry in the pool. If I add another pool, all I have to do now, basically it's this. I have to go under the pool database. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to add the third pool and fourth pool and fifth pool and all that. Okay. But this is one part of it. We have it almost ready to go. Now we are going to go to the good stuff. We have to now bring the master chef contract into the picture and get the information from the master chef contract so we can start displaying all that in the front end okay so let's go ahead and do that okay so now we have that ready to go now let's start working with the web3 calls okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna head over the deconfig js file okay let's start working here okay so now i am going to be importing the reveal and we are going to be using a model to connect our metamask wallet into the application I'm going to say import the a wallet client, and this will be from VM. Okay. And we are also going to be bringing custom. And I want to explain to you what that is. We need to tell the VM module that is going to be using Sepolia, the testnet that we are interacting with. Okay. We're going to say import, and we are going to specify Sepolia from VM chains. Okay. So that allows me to interact with Sepolia with using this VM mod module. Okay. This is a slightly different from the Web3 model, but again, it's basically going to do the same thing. Now we are going to be importing the master chef contract ABI, which we will definitely use. Okay. Import, say master chef ABI from, gotta say from master chef JSON. This will be the JSON file. You remember, this is how we added the master chef contract ABI onto the project. That's done. Now I'm going to say import the token ABI. So this is the ERC20 token ABI because we're going to be interacting with the token as well. From ERC20 ABI, it's beautiful. So we have imported both ABIs. Now I am going to be working with Peters as well. And boom, oh, awesome. Now I will be building that Web3 provider using Neum. And this is how I'm going to be talking to the browser wallet. Okay. I'm going to say it's constant web we provider, and this will be async. And I have get to have repo to work with VM and how you integrate your web three application using VM with a browser wallet. So I'm going to leave the link to this repo on this video. We say constant 
And now I'm going to be the current account because this will be the one address that we are going to be using to make the calls. And this is all going to be done by the stick. The end user is going to be making those calls, not backend or anything else. It's strictly the end user. Okay. And now we are going to be awaiting that window. So we are going to be awaiting the browser to load window from the window, we should interact with the Ethereum interface. Okay. And we are going to wait for that request. And the request is going to just going to come from the wallet. Okay. And now we are going to be specifying with method and their method is going to be deep. This is one on one, what three. Okay. Request account. And that should be it. Okay. So we got the interface to make calls using the wallet as our web tree provider. And from here, I can make calls into the smart. Let's build a client that is going to get the call. Okay. So we're going to say clients and we're going to create now using the import module from VM, create wallet client. And we are going to be specifying that. Now this is strictly, and you can see here on the parameters, the account, the account, all this information, we are going to be populating what we need. In this case, all I have to do is now I got to bring up the account, which we already declare. And now we are going to say Shane. And what's the Shane? Sepolia. And now the transport, what is the transport? We are going to be specifying custom, which we imported from VM. And we're going to say window Ethereum. This is how we tell that it's being handled by the browser session. And that's about it. And now I need to return the client. I'm going to say return client. Okay. So you can see here, this async function is going to wrap everything. It's going to build that account. Then we will invoke the account once we get that quest from the window. So once we build that connection with the web through wallet, then we should be able to obtain the account information. And then from there, we will pass all that to render that client in. Now I can effectively use web through provider to make my web through call. Let me go ahead and just format this real quick. And we're going to go ahead and now I can effectively make the calls. One thing that we have to work with and we are going to be working with multiple times in the application is we have to convert from way to ethers or integer, which means that I have to be constantly converting that to show that in the front end, not in this long way number, but instead in integer format with, you know, the decimal dot and then two fixed digits. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build a interface that we are going to be reusing to do that conversion. Okay. It's going to make the code a lot cleaner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the first one. It's going to be, let me just scroll up. I'm going to say convert to E. This is converting from way to E. Okay. We are going to be using this interface to do the conversions every time that we need to, instead of us continuing to declare this one by one or multiple times. Just do one and we'll send that conversion there. We'll do the conversion. Then we'll use the values on our return. I'm going to say ASIC and I am going to be specifying first, obtain the reward. The reward amount is going to be returned by the master chef contract in Saddle, which means that it's not going to be a way format for Saddle, but I still have to provide the conversion into integer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to specify type because we're going to be telling to this interface that if the type is reward, then I'm going to have a different conversion format. Okay. And else it just convert away as okay, so we're taking advantage and making the, the code cleaner by just consolidating both functions onto one type and then the value we're going to say value and now i'm just going to specify here so now in the value i have to do the following i have to say if type is equals to reward okay we are going to be passing that value if type it's equal to reward i want you to return this Okay. Meaning that if I invoke this function and I pass the type, I'm going to be providing this value as the type. I am going to be returning this particular conversion else. We're going to be returning something else. Okay. So in the return, I'm going to say number and we are now converting. We're going to be using ethers utility and we're going to be formatting ether and then we will be passing value. Okay. This is just to convert from way to ethers, but now we're going to be changing the format to be fixed, but with eight. Okay. You're going to see it now to fixed eight. So what this is going to do, it's going to return whatever we provided as the value, right? As we pass as value to fix eight, because the unit it's being returned as Sable and not wait. And we're not going to have the right reading, at least on the front end, if we're, if we're converting this to way uh, and, and just stripping out all the digits 
except two of the last two, which is just going to show decimal. Okay. Now we're just stripping all the digits, but now up to eight because it's going to be a different measurement. Okay. It's going to be SABL, which is a different unit of measurement in Ethereum. Okay. So now in case that's not the type, so it's not reward else. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be returning number again, right? We're just going to use the same statement. But instead of me fix eight, it's fix two. This, ladies and gentlemen, is way. So now we are converting from way to ethers. In this case, I'm converting from Sabo to ethers because the reward it's being passed by the blockchain. When I said the blockchain, I said the smart contract. It's passed as Sabo value. So I have to fix. I have to convert this a little bit different. Okay, so now we have this function, so we're good there. Now we are going to be converting the opposite. I have to, when I send the calls onto the blockchain, onto the smart contract, onto the master chef, I have to send the values in way. Okay, we cannot be sending the values in ethers because it's not going to be accepted. So I am going to be doing another interface that is going to allow me to convert from ethers to way because the user is going to be passing those values in ethers. You know, it's going to be sending a thousand tokens is going to only provide in the input field a thousand. And we have to convert that to way because the blockchain, the smart contract is expecting way. Okay. Else it's just going to be passing a very, very small value to be staked. And that's not good. Okay. Convert to way. Okay. Now we're just going to do async. And now we just need to pass value because there's no like difference here. It's just way. Okay. And now we're just going to return ethers, utils, parse ethers. Okay. This is how we are building that conversion onto way. And we're going to be passing the ethers value. Okay. Now, when we call this and we provide the value that the, the staker is going to tell us, it's going to be converted onto way. And the promise that is going to be returning from that async function is going to be the way value. And then we just pass that to the call. It's very straightforward. Okay. Cool. Now we are finally connecting the wallet into the application. Okay. So let's check this out. Export async. Let me just scroll a little bit up function connect wallet. Okay. And now we are going to be using this interface to interact with the MetaMask wallet. What is the first thing that I have to initiate? It's the connection. So we're going to say constant connection. We're going to be awaiting that return from the provider, which we already declare. Okay. So we're just going to use this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we effectively have enabled that connection to the MetaMask wallet. In this moment, when we call this, it's going to pop the MetaMask wallet. It's going to open it. It's asking to connect. Okay. So we have that. Once we get that connection from the end user, we are going to be now establishing that provider because we are going to be interacting with the Sepolia testnet. So I have to obtain the provider so then I can make the calls. I'm going to be calling this new constructor, new ethers, providers, web three provider. This is all part of the ethers library. And we're going to say connection. Okay. Beautiful. Now we have the provider ready to go. Now we're going to say constant signer and we are going to call provider, which we already have. And now we are going to get that signer. Okay. Now that we obtain the signer and this again, this is 101 web three 101. I am going to be effectively building that master chef smart contract interface. Okay. Let's build the master chef smart contract interface. Let's call this master chef. Now with this, I am going to be making calls to the functions inside the smart contract. Okay. This is the, this is quote the interface that we're going to be calling or using the API to do the calls. Okay. So, I am going to do new ethers. I want to say contract. And now we are initializing this contract. Um, we are going to be, first of all, specifying the address of the contract, which we already declare here. This is the first parameter, right? Master chef contract address. The second parameter that is expecting is going to be the ABI. So it's going to be asking for this ABI. Okay. And lastly, it's who is going to make the calls, the signer or the wallet. Okay. In this case, the wallet that is connected is going to be interacting with this master chef contract. Okay. Beautiful. Now with this connect wallet interface or function, I am going to be using it for all my calls, which means that I have to be returning a couple of things because I'm going to be using them individually. So I don't want to redeclare all this. I want to continue reusing this. Okay. So we're going to say return and we are going to be specifying connection because I want to get that connection apart because we're going to be obtaining information from this connection. We are going to be 
Also interacting straight with the signer. I want to use the signer separately. And then obviously the master chef contract, of course, beautiful. So now we can call those individually. Okay. Beautiful. Now I just call this async function and I await for the return and then I, I can, you know, obtain what I want to obtain or interact with those particular entries. Cool. So we are done with the connect wallet. Now the first thing that I have to obtain from the user side is going to be the token value. I need to know how many tokens is the user holding in the wallet, provide the information to the end user so they know how many tokens do they have available to stake on X pool. Okay. So if they are holding into the R tokens, we should be able to show the user, hey, you're holding this amount of tokens in your wallet, you can stake them. And we are going to be showing that in the model. When the user clicks open pool, I am going to be showing the available to be staked or in your wallet. So then the user knows how many tokens they have in the wallet. So for that, I'm going to say another function. Let's say constant fetch token balance. Okay. And this is how we're going to be obtaining that. I'm going to say async. I have to pass. Okay. Check this out. I have to pass the token address. Okay. So I have to be passing my contract address of the token because we're going to be using this not only to obtain the balance of N to the R tokens in the user's wallet, but also the USDT token balance, which means that I have to be passing those wallet addresses. So then we don't have to do this all over again for the second token or the third token or the fourth token. It's just going to look for every single one of them. Okay. And you might ask yourself, well, why, where are we getting the USDT token address? We're getting it from the master chef contract. When we do the get pool info, if you remember on the last videos, when we do get pool info, we get the token smart contract address. We can use that value here. Why we need to like manually add this into the front end. If the master chef contract already has those values, I'm just going to use those. Okay. So let's say token address. And we are going to be passing the user wallet because I need to know the address of the user. So then I can query the balance of that user against the contract. That's how I'm going to be able to find how many tokens is the user holding in their wallet. Okay. I'm going to say user wallet. Okay. So we are going to be providing that value. Okay. Now with that said, I am going to be establishing that web three connection, but now I need to interact with the information that I have from the connect wallet function, which means that I, be, I need to be interacting with this, with this and with this. Okay. So for that, I'm going to build that variable that is going to allow me to call that particular function. So I'm going to say web three connection. Okay. And we are going to be awaiting what connect wallet. Okay. Now we are effectively calling connect wallet and the return here. We can then use this variable to call and get the information. If I hover over it, you can see now that I'm able to make calls into all those APIs. Okay. So all, all those interfaces, I can make calls and get more information or what I need to you know, get from. Now I have to build a token interface or the token smart contract. The same way that I did with the master chef, I am going to be doing it for the token. So what I want to do, I want to copy and paste, but now I'm going to say token contract. Okay. I have to now specify the address of the token smart contract. We don't have the address. We are going to be obtaining the address from the master chef contract, which means that I am going to be passing this because we're going to be calling this from another function and we should be able to obtain the token address and pass it to this interface and get the information. Okay. So I'm going to say yes, I want to pass this right here, token address. Okay. And now I have to be working with the ERC 20 ABI, not the master chef ABI. Okay. We already have a declare here. Okay. So we're going to do token address, token ABI. And again, we're still going to be using the user wallet to make the interactions. This is the user doing the, the call. Now we want to obtain the balance of tokens state on the master chef contract. And how can we obtain this for every single token smart contract address? I am going to be calling balance of, and then I'm going to be passing the master chef address. And that's how I know how many tokens are staked on the master chef contract. Okay. So I'm going to say constant pool balance. Okay. And we are going to be awaiting token contract. Now we are interacting with the token smart contract and we're going to say balance of, okay. What the balance is, uh, from, from where do we want to obtain that value from the master chef contract? So we're going to pass master chef address. Okay. This is the, the address of the master chef contract. And every time that I call this function and I pass the, any token smart contract address, I should be able to obtain the balance that is staked on the master chef contract. 
Now this value is being provided to us in hex. So we have to convert this to way and to eaters. The easiest way for me to convert this is to use the interface that we just built, the, 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 the interface, the quick function that we are going to be using to convert this to eat, okay? So for that, I am going to say constant pool, and this will be the value in eaters of my balance. Remember, we have to convert that, okay? So we're gonna say await, and now we can call this convert to eater. That's what we mentioned before. Okay, now I can pass the type and the value. And because this balance is going to be provided to us in a way, I don't need to provide any type. So I'm gonna say, I still need to provide some value because else it's, it's not going to have the complete parameters and it's gonna fail. So I'm just gonna say null for the type. I don't need to provide a type. So what's gonna happen, it's not gonna match this, right? And it's just gonna use this, okay? And now I should be able to pass pool balance, which was the value that we obtained previously, okay? Boom. Now with this, we should have the value in ETH, okay? Awesome, so now we have the value of the balance in the MasterChef smart contract of stake tokens for X token address that we pass, okay? Well, guess what? I need to do the same thing with the user balance. So this will be how I'm going to be showing in the front end how many tokens is the user holding in their wallet and, have, and is available to be staked, okay? So the user can, can know how many tokens do they have in the wallet, okay? I'm just gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it again. Now it's gonna be user balance, right? And now we are, instead of me passing the MasterChef contract address, I'm gonna pass the user wallet, which is a value that we are going to be providing after, okay? This is something that we are going to be calling later and we should be obtaining all this information, okay? So I'm gonna say user wallet and boom, we got both. And now the user balance is going to be passed as the argument here as a parameter. And now this will be user, okay? And now we effectively fetch token balance of the pool and the user, okay? So this is a great way to name the whole function. Guess what I need to be returning? Both, you know, I'm gonna be returning both. I'm gonna return both the pool balance and the user balance for each token. Awesome. But something that I forgot, and I passed signer, but signer is something that is inside Web3 connection, okay? So I have to invoke this particular return, and I am calling this function that has been stored in this variable. So what I'm gonna do, in order for me to access this particular signer, all I have to do is add it here, right? You can see it there and then type, and there you go. Now we are effectively calling what is inside the return signer, okay? That's it. So we got the fetch token balance. That's, everything looks good there. Now, here comes the fun part. We are going to be getting all the pool information, okay? Now we have the fetch token balance, which we will be calling in the get pool information to then display everything about everything, okay? So export constant, and we're gonna say get pool details, okay? This is the function that is going to give me all the information that I need to know. So then I can display that in the front end, okay? Once again, I'm going to be calling the connect wallet. So might as well use this, copy, I'm gonna paste there. And I wanna say, uh, let user wallet, right? I want to obtain the address of the wallet that is connected. How do I do that? Now I can use this web3 connection variable, that connection, okay because this is what is being handled by the browser as we do that connection with the wallet we are going to be obtaining the details here so when i say connection and we are now going to look for the account and i can effectively call address and this should be providing me the string of the user wallet, okay? So I can use that to make calls. I need to interact with the MasterChef smart contract, which means that I have to import this MasterChef return from Connect Wallet. Now we are going to make calls into the MasterChef contract. So now I'm gonna say the following. I'm gonna say let MasterChef, and now we are effectively calling once again Web3 connection, and now we should look for MasterChef, and boom. Okay, now I can make calls into the MasterChef contract using this. Now we need to know how many pools do we have in the MasterChef contract because we're gonna be looping every single pool and getting information for every single pool and displaying that information in the front end, which means that I have to obtain the amount of pools that I have created on the MasterChef contract. And that value, if you remember, is pool length, okay? So we should be able to call that and get the information. Pool length. And now what I have to do, effectively, I am going to be awaiting master chef. This is the contract interface pool length. And this is an interface that we have in the master chef contract, okay? But here's the problem. This 
value that we're obtaining here, it's going to be hex. So we have to convert that to string. So we convert this value into an integer and then we convert the value into a number because we're going to be using that value to do the loop. Okay, so we're going to be doing the two conversions here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put this inside a parenthesis and we're going to grab, I'm going to say to string. Boom. So we have done the first conversion. We have converted from hex to string. Now we have to wrap this again. Okay, we're going to be wrapping this once again. I'm going to say number. Okay, now I am getting number after converting to string. I am converting that string to number. So I'm doing all three things in one line. Okay, beautiful. Now let's take a look. Let's see if this works. Okay, so let me test and then we can continue going from there. I want to show you what will happen. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I am going to console log pull length. Okay, beautiful. And what I'm going to do, I am going to declare pull details in the browser so then I can do the entire call. So I'm going to use the connect button and we are just going to get that right away. So what I got to do first, I'm going to import that interface here, import get pull details. Okay. And now I can use or this function in the button. Okay. So let's look for the connect button. I believe the connect button. Oh, the connect button. It's not in the index. It's in the app because it's on the nav. So if we go back, this is the button. So it's going to be in the nav bar. So let me go to the nav bar and say the nav bar. And we are going to be importing it here. Import get pull details. Okay. And now let's find that button. You can see the button right here. And we're just going to call this connect. Okay. And now I can say on click and I can pass that. So get pull details. Okay. Now we are effectively importing that from config. And if I click this button, we should be able to make the entire call. Okay. So let's see, let's see how that goes. So when I save it and I have config here, we got the master chef smart contract address. Beautiful. Save this as well. And let's go. Okay. So I'm going to refresh once again. Let me press F 12 connect. And we can see it already too. Awesome. So this is what we should be expecting. If you can see config.js line 59, number two. So there's two pools, pool zero and pool one. We are definitely getting the information. Okay. Awesome. Beautiful. It lo looks good. So if you look line 59, that's my length. That's awesome. Okay. Now I have to store all the information for that pool in an array because we're going to be using the same map that we used to render all the information from the from the pool database, we're going to take advantage of the same iteration and then provide the information from the MasterChef contract as well. Check this out. Now that we know we got the amount of pools in the MasterChef contract because we're getting that information from pool length, I can build a for loop that will go over every single pool and we can call each function that will give me the information that I need to display in the front end for each pool. Okay, so check this out. So going back to my function, now let's create an array, so pool array. Now let's do that for loop for let i equal zero, i is lower than length and i plus plus. There we go. Okay, so now the first thing that I got to obtain is the information for a particular pool. So what we're going to do, we're going to build the functions and then we are going to be testing those functions one by one so then you know what we are getting. I don't want to build the entire function and then try to explain because that's not a good approach. I want to call each function. We do the for loop for each pool so then we can see the information right away. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm going to say let's pull info and we are now going to await master chef again once again we're calling the master chef contract and this time we are going to be calling the pool info so let me show you the functions that we have so we are going to be obtaining the pool information which is basically calling this public mapping pool info and we should be obtaining the information for that pool all those values will be obtained once i do the call so let's do that so let's call pool info and now remember when i call pool info i have to specify the pool id right but now we are doing this for loop guess what that will be the id so we'll have exactly you know pool one pool two and such okay okay so let me press f12 and let's take a look and see what we got let's see there we go there we go okay so we know that we have two pools and you can right away see 
my token smart contract address this will be the uh, liquidity pool token then we know that if you can take a look here the, the property names or the key names we got the first one it's going to be the allocation point then the last reward block and the token and smart contract address and reward per share meaning that these values are the ones that i need to use and manipulate to get the information display in the front page so in this case what we can do is convert those values onto decimals right because that's what we want to show in the front end okay so now we know that we were able to get all that information from that call so let's go back so now that we have that I need to obtain the token smart contract address and we saw that we saw that on the browser right we saw that we are we are effectively obtaining the smart contract of the token that I'm allowing to stake now I can use this address to then call the token smart contract and then obtain the balance of the master chef contract and that ladies and gentlemen is the amount of stake tokens on the smart chat smart contract for this particular pool calling the token smart contract using this address i am requesting balance of and I'm going to be passing the master chef contract address with that I am going to obtain the amount of tokens that we have staked in the master chef contract so let's go back okay so what we're going to do I'm going to say let and now we are going to use that variable and then we're going to see that we are going to be extracting which value out of the array okay so if we go back we can see that zero will be our token smart contract okay so that's what we need to obtain so let's go back and this is the index in the array and now if i console log that i should only see the token address okay so if we go back refresh here i'm gonna connect there we go we're only getting the token smart contract perfect now we got the token smart contract address okay so now we know that works now i got to obtain the reward token per share as we know that's the amount of tokens that i'm going to be paying per stake token okay so we're going to say let reward per token and we have to convert this into a string so then we get the value in integer right then we convert that to decimal so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to say this is raw because i have to reconvert this and i and i know i can nest but let's do it this way so then everyone understands so in this case all i have to invoke is going to be pull info now i just need to determine what was the index value that i need to obtain okay i can do the following so i'm going to do this and then i'm just going to console lock once again pull info i want to say save and let's do it again because i forgot what was the token there we go we get that and we know that reward token per share is going to be position three you can see it right here this will be the last item zero one two three then we got four items inside the array we're gonna get index three okay and effectively i can do this remove now i'm gonna say three and that we now have the token smart contract address and we have reward per token or pre reward per share okay so i have to convert this into a integer i'm going to close this and i'm going to specify to string right now with that i am effectively going to obtain this value in integer it's hex but we are uh, going to be converting this onto a an integer okay so if i do console log reward per token boom go back and let's give it a shot again and you can see it's zero because there's nothing and you can see both pools are, are zero so i don't know you can see i think it's your i'm on the way here so let me see if i can spend a little bit more but it's you know it, it showed the value twice okay so at least we know it's, it's working now we got the reward token raw value now we want to get the actual value so reward per token now let's convert that raw value into decimal or into an integer so what we are going to do grabbing that value and passing it to my converter that we just built we are going to be passing the type and the value now it's the moment that we have to convert this from sable onto decimal okay which means that i have to make sure that i pass the first parameter to be type reward so then if it matches this okay once we do that we should have the conversion done into integer but you see that is zero because there's nothing state but if i didn't do this we will see a long number like a sable or you know similar to way we will see a big long number and that's not what we want okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to say number 
right? But then inside this, we're gonna add the function. We're gonna be calling that convert to ETH. And the first parameter is going to be reward. Okay, as you know, the first parameter is going to be type, so I'm passing reward, and then the second parameter will be the reward per token raw. Okay, so I'm going to just do comma, and then the second one will be reward per token raw. Okay, and that's it. Okay, now if I console lock reward per token, probably it's going to be the same because there's nothing staked, but it should now show show us a number. Okay, you connect. And you can see it's a number and it's still, but that's good. Okay, so now we know that works. Now that I have the token smart contract address, now I can call that token smart contract. Okay, so now I need to query this token smart contract and determine the balance. What balance am I going to be looking for? I am going to be looking for the master chef contract balance so that I know how many tokens are staked and also the wallet of the user. So then I can show the user how many tokens they have available on the wallet and can be staked, okay? So that's a good detail or a good data information to provide the client, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say let, and I am going to specify token. And now what we are going to do, token balances, it's we can effectively pass the smart contract, right? And the wallet of the user. The return is going to be the amount of tokens that I'm staked. And in this case, the tokens staked on the pool and the amount of tokens in the user wallet, in the connected wallet. So we will be providing those two values. So with that said, I'm gonna say token balances, and now we are effectively calling that information. We're gonna say await fetch token balance, so we're calling that function. And now we're going to be passing what first? We're gonna be passing the token address, and then we will be passing the user wallet, okay? So let's pass the token address, which we obtain from the call. You can see it right there. And now I am going to be passing the user wallet, which is something that we are obtaining from here. Boom, beautiful. With this, now what I can do, now that I obtain all the balances, now I want to obtain what has been staked by the user. I need to obtain that value. So what I can do is obtain that information from the user information or struct or storage in the smart contract, okay? So what I can do, I can say let user, and this is all functions that are read functions that are on the MasterChef contract, and we can just invoke them using ethers, okay? User array, because we're gonna be manipulating those values a bit, okay? So we're gonna say await, master chef that's the call to the master chef contract and we are going to call user info right and now the first parameter and if you remember in this particular section we have a nested mapping so if we go back to the smart contract it's going to be right here so guess what i need to be providing two values i got to provide the pool id which is uint256 and then i have to provide the user wallet address okay very simple what i'm going to do I am going to be providing first the token ID, which we all know is the I, because it's inside the loop. And then the second value is going to be the user wallet, okay? Which we are obtaining right here, okay? So with that, we can then get information regarding the particular wallet. Awesome, so we have the all the array info, which is basically two values. It's the reward debt or the pending reward and the amount of token staked. That's what we are recording, okay? Beautiful. So if I, as a matter of fact, if I, if I run it, console log, I'm going to say user staked array, we should be obtaining that information from the smart contract. So let's give it a shot. There we go. So we got the user array and we saw two outputs. That means that it's, you know, pool one and pool two. Okay. And you can see here that we don't have amount. This will be the first item inside the struct, literally zero because nothing has been staked. And then pending reward, it's also zero because nothing has been staked. So it's brand new. Okay. So we're looking very good. Okay. So let's continue. Awesome. So now we got let we are going to obtain what it's pending to be paid to the staker, okay? Which means that it's the user pending amount. 
So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to say user reward raw because it's still a value that we have to manipulate very similar to what we ended up doing on the reward per token. So we had it raw and then we convert this here. Okay. So now what we're going to do here, we're going to say await master chef and we're going to call that pending reward function that we wrote that pending reward function. If you remember on the master chef contract video, that is the function that is just going to estimate how many tokens are we due to pay to the staker or it's pending to be claimed. Okay. So what I'm going to do is basically provide what, if we go back to the smart contract, we are going to see pending reward right here. And it's asking my parameters are PID pool ID, and it's going to be the user wallet. Okay. So let's do that. So as a matter of fact, I can go with the easy route, which is literally copy this and just throw it here literally the same thing. Okay. But this value, as we know, it's still going to be hex. So we have to convert that onto way. So what we're going to do, we're going to open here, close it down and then to string that should be converting it onto a string number, but then we have to convert that later. Okay. Now we're going to say the following. We're going to say let bonus and we want to display the X multiplier value, right? So we, we want to show that, which means that I am going to be now calling once again to get the opportunity to close it because we also have to convert this onto string. I want to say await, and we are going to just call that public variable that we just declare called, uh, by the way, I have to call the master chef contract first and we're going to say bonus multiplier. Okay. And I can say now here dot to string. Okay. I should be obtaining the bonus multiplier, which is assign when we deploy the smart contract. Okay. So this will be right here. Awesome. We're almost done. Let user reward. Now I want to effectively convert the user reward. This is not the reward per token. This is the user reward, which is raw. And we have to convert that into, you can see that we have done this with reward per token. I have to do it now for the user. So what I want to do, I'm going to grab this because we're going to be using this, right? I want to say equals, and then I'm going to convert this. And in this case, we are going to replace this value with user reward raw. Okay. So now I'm doing the same thing, but now it's going to be for the user reward. Okay. And this should provide me the amount of tokens that we have to pay the staker, which is like pending reward. Okay. Now what I got to do after I'm going to be obtaining the amount of tokens that the user has staked, okay, which we have, but we have to strip it out, you know, take it out of this uh, array. And by the way, this array is hex. So we also have to do this, have to convert this, convert this whole thing onto string. Okay. So let's say user staked. And now what I'm going to do, I'll probably use the same call because we have to convert this string number. And now here is where we are going to do that magic. So what I want to do, I am going to be converting, but I want to extract the values at the same time log. And then I can say user staked array, which is the variable or the storage for this information. And then inside here, I can specify the key item that we are obtaining. If we go back, I hope that it didn't remove the uh, history. So I did not. That's great. So now I can say pending reward, for example, or I can say amount inside here. Then I'm effectively taking that out. If we go back inside here, I can then put in quotations amount, right? And then I want to say save and let's see how that looks. Okay. Okay. So we have effectively removed the object from the array. So now you can see the object is outside the, the array, but we have to still convert this onto a string. So what I got to do, I'm going to take an opportunity of this, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to use a reward. I already did. And now I'm going to convert the user staked. And now here is where I'm going to be passing this whole, whole thing. So it's going to say this string, and I hope that it allows me to, I, I think it will. Okay. So here's how it gets interesting. You can see all I'm doing is I'm still passing reward because it's going to be from Sabo. It's still a reward because the value is going to be presented in Sabo. So I have to make sure that I properly convert this onto, onto decimal. Okay. So with that said, this so it should do, let's see, but I need to wrap this in. That should do it. Con console log user state. Okay. 
if I go back, connect, let's see what pops up. It's zero, but now it's going to is is it's a number. So it's not it's not string. Okay, so that's good. Okay, beautiful. We're we're good here. The last thing I gotta do, and then we can start building the entire uh JSON object, and then we'll pass the JSON object onto the pool map, as you saw. That's how we can provide the information across all my pools easily. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick APR function, a percentage number, like to obtain a percentage number from the staking reward. Again, this will vary because if someone actually stakes token, then the math is going to be off or it's going to be recalculated, which means that the percentage is variable. It's not going to be a, a solid thing or it's not going to be a fixed number. It's something that is going to constantly change. OK, so what I can do, I can define the following. I can say, well, let me show you an approximate percentage that you will obtain if you stake a thousand tokens, for example, and I can provide that value and then the value based on the user reward it's going to be this amount. Um, so what I get to do, I am going to say, I'm going to open this. I'm going to say, let's say if you stake a thousand tokens and we're going to be multiplying this by reward per token, which we know that that's the amount of tokens that I'm going to be paying per stake token. Okay. Go paste. And if I do this, then this value or divide it by 100. I believe that should give me the conversion I need, but let's see. Console log APR. I'm going to say here, let's go back. It's going to be zero because there's nothing staked. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, it's zero. But, but I'm getting the information that I need. Okay, we'll we'll get back to this. Okay, to just to make sure. I think it's going to be different. I, I think I have to. I, I know that I'm right here because this gets me the amount of tokens that I should be getting on reward per token. But it, this is just going to give me the. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. Okay. All right. So let me go back. I'm going to say pull stats. Now we want to grab all that data and then create quote database or like a JSON structure very similar to what we ended up doing here. So then I can provide that also in the map and then we can display those numbers in the front end. OK, so I want to say pull stats, just do it stats specifying total state. Right. And let's pass the total state. So if we go to total stake, we have to pass token balances. Remember, we are obtaining token balance for both the user and the pool. So in this case, all I have to do is do this token balances. And then I'm going to be specifying that it's the pool, the one, the information that I want to obtain from that call. Okay. Now we are going to be adding APY. That's the APR. That's the percentage that we obtained not long ago. And again, we are going to see it once we stake, we will see that. Okay. And we're going to say user staked, right? And we are going to be passing user stake, which is the value that we are obtaining after doing the conversion. Okay beautiful and then we're going to say user uh this one's going to be reward and again we're going to be passing the value that i convert now we're going to be passing that multiplier value so we are going to be calling multiplier right and then we're going to be passing the bonus that's that's the multiplier values and now we're going to be passing user balance which is the amount of tokens that the user has available in the wallet and they can stake if they want to so we want to provide that information for the user okay so we're going to say that and now we are just going to call the same one right but it's it's going to be the user at that point there you go beautiful oops okay and finally, I want to grab and store the token address because with the token address, I can make calls straight to the token smart contract. I want to obtain that token smart contract address and then I can do more calls with that information. You see where I'm going? OK, so if I do this token address, right, and it's going to be token address, which is the information that we obtain right here. OK. Beautiful. Looking good so far. Now that I build this entire JSON object, we are going to now store this pool stat inside the array that we initialized. OK, so we are going to just grab pool array right below here and we're going to say push. What are we going to push? Pull, pull stats. And what I want to return after making this call is going to be obviously the array. Return pool array. OK, beautiful. So that's there. I want to show that information in the front end. So what I can do is the following. Another item that I got to work with, it's going to be the set interval to call this every X amount of 
seconds, like every five seconds, get me a new reading, get me a new reading. So then we can see that update live in the front end and we should be able to work on the functions and we are done. Okay. I'm going to do the following. I want to call that get pull details every five seconds. And we want to update those values every five seconds, for example. Okay. I want to store those values in an use state hook. So I am going to be using use state here, which means that I want to use that to store the value that we obtain. One of those values will be the user wallet because we're going to be using that same value to then make calls by the user. The user is just going to be using their wallet and we can show the wallet on screen. We can show more information about that particular user, for example. But I need to store this in the use state because I have to use that after. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, I want to make sure that the user, when it connects their wallet, we get the wallet address and we can use the wallet address inside the application. Okay. Which means that what I am going to do status here. I want to make sure that the user has connected their wallet. Just going to declare this use state right here. And then the initial state is just going to show connect wallet. Okay. And once the user connects their wallet, this status should be updated to connected. And we will show that, you know, on, on screen right away. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I am going to create an ASIC function right in the app called connect. And inside this function, I am going to be obtaining the wallet address, right? We are going to say await what connect wallet. So we have to use the connect wallet function that we coded previously, this one, in the app. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I have to import that as well. I'm going to say connect wallet has been imported. And now I can say await connect wallet. I'm going to be calling that function. And then I want to get the output, right? Or you can do, you know, value. And then it's, once I obtain that value, I am going to do what? I'm going to be returning, returning, then value, then connection, right? We are calling this connect wallet, which is uh, getting me all that output back. If we go back to the config, just for you to see, you can see connection, signer, and master shift. I can call each individual item inside the variable that we are exporting, okay? So I'm going to say value, I'm going to say connection. Now the next item, and by the way, this is how you get the address. So I could be going to the lazy mode here. I can find that statement. Here we go. Connection. So in this case, it's labeled what three, but it's the same. So I'm going to say this right here. This will be my wallet, the connected wallet address. So we're going to go back. I'm going to say here, I'm going to specify, boom, double dot. But now this information should give me the wallet address. This will be stored here. Okay. Now what I can do with that, I can store the wallet address into the local storage, meaning that inside the browser, the moment the user connects, I am going to store that number in the browser session. So then I can reuse the number without having to call this once again, because that slows down the, the app. I don't need to make too many calls. Okay. If I'm going to be reusing this value, I should be storing this temporarily in the browser and then work with that value, not making calls every time that I need to get the wallet address. Okay. So now what I'm going to say, I'm going to say local storage, and that's how I'm going to be storing this information in the browser session. And I'm just going to recall the item that I need. Okay. You're going to see that this is very, very powerful and I should, you should be leveraging this. Okay. I'm going to say set item. This is how we're going to be declaring that item that will be stored locally. And we are going to be calling this the wallet, right? Now we're going to say comma and we are going to be passing the wallet address. Okay. So we're going to say wallet address. Beautiful. Now here's what I need to do. I want to make sure that the user connects their wallet before even interacting with the application, which means that I have to find a way to confirm that the user has connected to the wallet. And what better way than to making sure that this value has stored information, has stored the wallet address. Okay. How do we know that? Because we're going to be reading the local storage. Now we have effectively run this particular function. This information should have stored with the key of wallet inside the browser console or inside the browser session. Okay. So if we go back, I am going to do this. I'm going to say use effect, same thing. And inside this use effect, I am going to do the following. I want to make sure that I constantly check that the user has to connect their wallet. Else I want to make sure that you don't operate that the platform 
it's not going to be able to do anything because it needs the user connection to get all the information that we are building into this app. Okay. So that means that the wallet has to be connected all the time. So how do we constantly check every five seconds, every four seconds that the user has the wallet connected? Check this out. We're going to say this set interval. And now we can effectively insert that interval inside here. And we're going to say let wallet ID. So we are going to be confirming that by what? By querying the local storage once again. We set the item here. Now we are going to pass get item and we are going to be passing that reference key here. Okay. And that should give me back the wallet address. Okay. And now I got to do that if I'm going to say wallet ID is not null. Okay. Then get status. Okay, you can see here, and I want to convert status from being connect wallet to connected. Okay. And this will be an extra info that we will be showing to the end user, which is kind of cool. And I can now determine how often do I want to check this every five seconds. Okay. So now if I do that, I should be getting connected onto the button. But now what I have to do here, instead of leaving this with the string, I'm going to the, I'm going to be passing the status, right? The status is the information that is going to determine if the wallet is not connected, it should show on the button connect wallet. If the wallet has been connected, it should show connected. Okay. There you go. So I'm going to say safe. I'm going to go back and you can already see that it's connected. Okay. Oh, I see what's going on. It's calling get pool details instead of connect and under connect. I am actually storing the information in storage, right? We are going to fix that. I'm going to say connect. Boom. I did connect. Now we should be able to do that. So let me get my incognito wit window. We're going to refresh this. Let's try it one more time. Okay. Now I'm going to connect wallet. Boom. Connected. Awesome. 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 Cool. Cool deal. So we know that we are hundred percent there. Now let's take a look and display the information on the front end. Okay. So let's go back. Now we're going to go into the front end and now we have to obtain that information back. Okay. We are going to be importing the get pool information. Okay. And let's go ahead and test. Okay. So I got that. Now I am going to do the following. The idea is for us to provide the interface. So the user only has to connect their wallet and automatically the pool information will be updated in the front page. With that said, I have to take advantage of use effect, which basically what it's going to do is going to call the good pool, get pool details. And then if there are changes, then we should be able to capture that state and then re-trigger the pool details. So then we can render everything and we can show and we can map the same way we map the pool database to the front page. We are going to be mapping the output of that array that we are returning. If I go back, we are returning this pool array inside this pool array. We will have this information per pool. So what we're going to do, we are going to be calling this function and then we will be extracting all that information per pool and display that on each card. Okay. Same goes with the model. We will display the amount of tokens that are staked on that pool and all that because we're getting this information initially. Okay. So we have to determine when the user connects their wallet and we obtain this information, then go ahead and render and show everything on screen. Okay. Okay. We are going to build the function that is going to get the pool information. So I'm going to say constant get pool info. Okay. And this will be async and we will just do this. We'll do here. And now we want to re refresh this. And we mentioned that every five seconds we will have an update and we should see the changes on screen. We should see the balances changing, the amount of token changing. All that will be refresh every five seconds, which means that I have to build a set interval and then place inside the set interval, the get pool details to be queried. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I am going to set interval and this will be an async set interval. So I'm going to do it async because we are expecting a return. So we have to await, we have to call get pool, pool details and we have to await that function from completing so that we can extract output. Okay. So I'm going to say the following, I'm going to say here, and obviously we do comma at the end and then we'll type the time that we want this to be ran to to run this. So it's going to be 5,000, which is five seconds. And now we can effectively say pull array, right? And now we can say await. And now let's call get pull detail. Okay. The moment I do that, 
it's going to go to my config it's going to go over the loop and it's going to check every single pool and get me that information back pool array it's the array that we're looking for you can already see that all the information that i i stored in that json object it's, it's been sent back right so the moment we run this we should see this fully populated okay now i need to be able to store this information in use state because that's how i'm going to be able to pass it on to the html code okay so i'm going to say the following i'm going to say constant and now let's invoke here we want to grab pool array let's just call this pool array and this will be the variable that we will be using in the html code to show every single um info okay and then we'll say get pool array do it that way and we'll say use state right and the use state empty it's an empty array as initializing with an empty array and now i can say get pool array and then i just pass what i obtained from the call before okay beautiful awesome and because i i am not going to be obtaining this before because I have to await the details, right? I am not going to obtain this information beforehand. It's going to render with, without anything. It's going to render the site without any information. It will definitely error out because there's certain parameters that we are not obtaining, which is going to show as undefined and it's going to trigger an error in the front end. So what I can do, have a preloading page, meaning that in the same web interface, I am going to be showing fetching details. I am going to be showing a message that is going to tell the user, hey, I am waiting for the information to populate. What I'm doing on the back end, I am going to provide the information the moment Next.js determines or detects that the pool array has information already stored. Else it's going to be undefined, then we would just await for the details to be fetched. It's very cool. It's very straightforward and something that we should definitely be doing so then we don't run into any user experience issues in, in which the user error messages because the data has not been fully populated and stuff like that. I am going to be doing a use effect, right? First of all, I'm going to do that. This first use effect, what that's going to do, it's just going to run this particular function, right? So I'm going to close this inside here. I'm going to be calling that get pull info. The moment I render the site or I open the site, it's going to call this function right away. It's just going to call this function. And it's going to continue calling this function every five seconds. So now I need to do the following. I am going to be creating another use effect and I can do it here as well. That doesn't matter. I can do it right here. This use effect, however, it's to determine if the pool array has been filled with data, meaning that I already went through this and I already updated my use state. So now this information has been populated. Now go ahead and render the rest of the HTML code. Why? Because again, we will have in the HTML code certain parameters that are going to be calling this pool arrays use state variable, right? And if I don't have anything defined, it's going to call them defined, it's going to show errors. We don't want that, okay? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say if, right, this will be conditional, pull array, and we will say zero, which is the first entry inside the array, or the first pool. If the first pool is not undefined, it's not, that means that it has data, then we are going to be doing another use state to store a quote condition, right? I'm going to say true or false. If it's false, that means that we don't have any information in the pool array and then I'm going to be displaying a different HTML page, not page. It could be page or it could be a section. So instead of me showing the, the instead of me showing the cards, I am going to show fetching data or fetching information. The moment that state changes to true, then I'm going to be showing the card. Why? Because again, it helps with the user experience. So now what I'm going to do, I am going to say if it's on, if it's not undefined, that means that it has data, then I am going to be generating set. I'm going to call this set loading state. Okay. And this by default is going to be false, meaning that by default, if I have not loaded anything, it's going to show false, which is going to be showing fetching information or fetching details in the front end. Okay. And then I'm just going to say here, loading state, right? Then I'm going to be updating this. If we do have information in the pool array, then this state will be changed to true. This will change to true. And then we will show the real front end, which is the sticking pools. Okay. So now I can say here, set loading state. I'm going to just pass it into my use effect right here. I'm going to say set loading state. That means that it does have data. 
I want to change this to true. Okay, beautiful. And you might say, well, what if I don't have this already populated, meaning that it didn't complete it populating. And then even though that I have the data, this got matched before and we were not able to change the state. No, because we will pass this right here meaning that any changes that you detect or you sense on this particular use state, then I want you to run it again. And then now we will change this back you know, to true. We will change this output to true. We have this ready. Now I have to build a simple HTML section that is just going to render. In case this value is false, it's going to show that. In case it's true, it's going to change to the real output, okay? So check this out. Now I'm going to say the first return, we're gonna do an if. If loading state, okay, it's equals to false, that means that we don't have data in the pool array, then I want you to return this, okay? And we are gonna be passing an HTML section, which is basically fetching details, okay? So let me go ahead and grab it and copy. It's just a normal um, HTML section, right? I'm just gonna show it to you guys. It's just going to show basically the same thing that I'm going, I'm going to show in the beginning, right? But just going to show the top portion. It's going to show the video, right? But then at the end, it's gonna show fetching details, okay? That is if the case of loading state matches false, meaning that I don't have any pool array detected or retrieved from a value or output perspective, okay? Now else, again, if I if this doesn't match, then go ahead and just return the real view, okay? So now with that said, I can now effectively save this and see if we are successful. And head is not defined. Okay, uh, I'm missing something. Don't worry. So I'm gonna say import. This is next yes. There we go. We're gonna save. And there you go. Now we can see because I haven't queried the blockchain. It's oh, actually it changed. Why is that? Because it's five seconds. Every five seconds, it's going to query. So that means that let me let me show you back again what happened. It actually worked. But here's the thing: the moment I render the site, the center interval it's set for five seconds. So I have to wait five seconds, and then it's going to do this. Right? It doesn't mean that it's going to do this first. It's going to do this after the five second timeout. It does, and then another five second time has to go by. So then we can do it again. So it's five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. So the first five seconds, we have to wait five seconds and then we will retrieve the information. And because my wallet is already connected, that's why we're seeing that successfully populating, right? So if I refresh, I should be waiting five seconds. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. You will see it now. There you go. So that's it. We know that it's working. If we didn't have any data in the pool array, it will just stay and fetch details. Okay. Good with that. And we also know that we now have data in the pool array. So let's go ahead and populate the data so then we can start seeing the information in the front end. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So now I have pool array. I can effectively pass this down to the card. So let's go to HTML. Let me just go this down and let's find the information. So the first thing is going to be the APY. So let's go ahead and find the APY from the pool array. So the APY, if we go here, we have to pass pool array, right? Then it's going to be the ID of the pool, which in this case is the same thing as the ID on the card, because remember we have multiple pools and this is just going to store all the pools together. And then we'll just pass PR, okay? So with that said, let's go back. I'm gonna do the following. So if I press F12, I am going to show you that the array, it's definitely popping. E, let's see here. I'm gonna do a console so you can see it. And it's gonna continue showing it every five seconds. So I have to like stop it. So wait for that. Boom, we got the array. So let me go ahead and stop it. Okay, so now you can see here that I already have, and it's going to continue because I re-rendered, okay? So I have both pools. I have pool zero and I have pool one, okay? So now I have all those values that I can then provide onto the front end. Now I can see the amount of tokens that I have in my wallet, which is awesome. I got the smart contract address. I got the amount of tokens that I staked on the vault. I got the reward because it's zero. I haven't worked with the pool. And then we'll have the multiplier. Okay, so let's bring the APR and let's bring the total stake and bring the user stake, okay? So we can see it that we have all that information here, the user stake. We got the pending reward and we got the total stake and the APY. So with that said, let's go back and now let's do it here. So flex APY, we mentioned the first thing I'm going to be providing is pool array, which is the use state. Again, this is what we stored. And now I am going to say I, right? Because I is the number of the card. 
and I will be zero, which is going to match the pool array that we're exporting. And now we're going to say APR. Okay. And now I should effectively close this and we are leaving this percentage on the right. And if we press control S, go back, boom, we got the percentage. Awesome. So let's continue doing the other ones. Now we're just going to take advantage of this. I can go ahead and continue my stakings. Now let's provide my stakings and it's going to be right here. I don't know if you can see it because my screen is on the middle. Like, okay, there we go. So now my stakings, I'm going to be adding pull array again. And now we are going to be finding that key value, which in this case is user stake. Okay. So we're just going to copy. We're going to go back. We're going to say user stake right here. Okay. Control S C again. Boom. Zero. Awesome. We, we don't have anything staked and it shows both because it's going one by one. Okay. Now let's continue pending rewards. Let's go ahead and provide the pending reward. Again, it's going to be, oops, it's going to, it's going to be this. We're going to provide it right here. And this case will be, let's find the value reward. This is the amount that is pending to be paid. We're just going to pass it right here. Control S go back. Boom. Pending rewards. Awesome. And now we are going to be placing total stake in the pool. Okay. So let's grab this whole thing here. Copy total stake in the pool. Let's pass it right here. And we will just find that value, which is total stake. Okay. Copy, go back, total stake, and let's go back. Boom. Zero, zero, zero. Awesome. 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 Okay. Next, we are going to be providing the same information here because remember, we still have the model. So we have to provide this. It's going to ask the, uh, my stakings and the amount of tokens that I have staked and which is basically the same thing that we have outside. My earning is depending on reward and then what is in my wallet, which is the other value and the multiplier, which is the bonus. Okay, so let's do that. Let me just leave it there. I'm going to go back and now let's go to the model and let's see stake on stake. And there we go. Here's the section where we are going to be providing that value. Let me remove this. Okay. My stakings. And we mentioned that it's this. So let me find that here. It's going to be user stake, right? Let's we'll say copy. And we're going to go back here. User stake. Awesome. Now my earnings is going to be the reward. I believe it's going to be reward. Okay. So we're going to do that. So in this case, it's going to be reward. Okay. And now next it's going to be the multiplier. It's going to have an X here. So what's the multiplier? It's going to be the multiplier. So it's called multiplier as well. Okay. So I'm going to do here. I'm going to just paste this once again, but then here I'm going to change this to be multiplier. Okay. I'm going to control S, but I still have one more. And now it's in my wallet. So those will be the tokens that I have in my wallet and they can be staked on the pool. I am going to be finding that value here, user balance. So this will be the balance inside the wallet. Okay. User balance. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back and I'm going to provide this here. I'm going to control S. Let's see if the model has updated. Hmm. Ha ha ha. Multiplier three. And we said that it was bonus. It was three. We got staking. We got earnings. And this is the amount of tokens of ND and to the R tokens that I have in my wallet, which is amazing. Okay. Now we're going to go to the second pool and I got, you know, that amount of USDT in the wallet. And now you can see the multiplier. You can see your stakings all of that. And now we can see that auto compound isn't available because I am not going to allow to auto compound uh, because I am not paying USDT back. Okay. So awesome. So we're good here. We're done. The last thing that we have to do is enable the staking on staking and auto compound function. Okay. So with that said, let's go back. So let's go back to our config. So we're done with the GUI. Uh, everything the GUI has been done. The only thing that we have left to do is provide the functions to do the staking on staking and auto compound. Okay, so now we are going to be doing two functions. One, we are going to call this first function action because we want to nest on stake and stake on the same action. So then we don't have more functions that we need to. And we would just send if the action is stake, well, we'll redirect that to the stake. Uh, if the action is on stake, we will redirect that to the on stake and we'll go from there. Okay. So now I'm going to say the following export because we're, we are going to be importing this to the front end. Okay. So we're going to say export const action. Okay. We're going to say async, right? And I have to be able to pass the pool ID that I'm going to be doing the staking because I have to tell the smart contract, hey, this is going to stake on pool one, pool zero, pool two, etc. Which means that I'm going to be passing that I, the I that we generate on the card 
the same one that we're using to export the values, we're going to be also telling the smart contract, hey, this is the value. This is what we need. This is the, the pool that we need to stake. Okay. And we are obviously passing amount. So from the user side, the, the, the input field, when the user types the amount, that is how we are going to fetch that value. And then we can pass it along. You know, we'll convert that value to way and we'll pass it to the smart contract. Now I have to also provide the token address and you're going to see why, because I have to be able to pre-approve the master chef contract from moving the tokens, meaning that I need to send first a call to the token smart contract. So then it approves the master Master Chef smart contract to move the tokens on my behalf. Remember, I had to send an approval. I have to approve the Master Chef contract for moving the tokens first, which I have to do that first. Okay. And it has to be done on the staking function, not the unstaking because it's already staked. But on the staking, when I'm going to be staking, I have to approve the Master Chef comp from moving those tokens. Okay. And finally, we're going to be providing the action. So the action is, is going to have either unstake or stake, and then we will determine where to send that call. Okay. We will say unstake, we just go here or stay go here like it's going to make stuff cleaner okay and let's go ahead and do this function so we're going to do a try here it's basically to capture in case we have issues then we'll do a catch right and i'm just going to say console log error it's just to you know catch any errors uh, okay so now we are going to say the following we're going to say let and we are going to be converting the amount that the user wants to either stake or unstake to way Okay, so we're going to say the following. We are going to await convert. Now it's going to be two way. Remember those two functions that we did at the beginning? It's either one or the other. So in this case, now we're converting from ETH to way because the smart contract is expecting way, not ETH. Okay, and now we are passing amount. That is the value that the user is going to provide to us. But remember this value, we have to make sure that it's a string. Okay, so after it has been converted, we have to make sure that it is sent as a string. So I'm going to say to string. So after you do your conversion, send me that value back as a string. Okay. And this is how we convert this to way. Now we have to work with the web three call. Okay. So we have to capture the web three call like we did right here, right? We're going to be working with the wallet. So we are going to be capturing that out of here. And now I got to get the master chef contract. Okay. Because we, we need to obtain the master chef contract, which is already built in the connect wallet, as we saw in the previous section. Right. And that's not a fact I can do this. I can copy, I can paste it right here. Right. Now we can interact with the master chef contract. And also I am going to be interacting with the master chef contract address because I have to tell to the token smart contract. Once I send the approval to move the tokens, I got to tell that token smart contract, Hey, to this address, I'm, I'm requesting approval for this address. I am sending you to approve it for this address. Okay. So I have to know the master chef contract address. So I'm going to say let, okay. And I can just say this, I can say master chef address, right? Or I can even just use that value. So it should be, and I'm going to say if now that I have that, I am going to say action, if action equals on stake, right? And that, that's me making it uh, readable for humans, but I can just say zero or one. And then that, that could be also, you know, it's any parameter, right? to define either is stake or on stake. Now I'm going to say the following let result, right? Now we are going to effectively on stake. So that means I have to call my master chef contract, which we already declared, right? And now we are sending the function on stake. Okay. And now I have to provide I, which is, I want to stake from this pool and then I'm passing amount to wait. Okay. Then if everything goes well, right? If everything goes well, return true. Okay. That means that uh, we got a successful call. Then inside we are just returning result, right? Because in the front end, I can say the moment this gets called, when I get that return result, which is true, I can do something. I can just display, Hey, transaction successful. I can display any information to the end user. Okay. Now, I am going to do this else. Okay. And I am going to assume else if it's not on stake, then it's going to be stake. Then else I have to now pre-approve. I'm going to pre-approve the transaction by calling the token contract, which means what I have to build that tokens, my contract interface, which means that I have to declare new ethers contract. And I'm going to say token address. That is what? That is the address that we are providing when we make the call. And remember, we're getting that information from the get pool info. So we're getting all those details. We just need to pass it along into the call back. And then we will have this here. So I'm building this ethers contract, right? The token address. Now I have to be providing the token ABI, right? So we will be providing the token ABI. Go down here. 
And at the end, we are going to be using what? We're going to be using the signer. This is the wallet to make this call. So we're going to say Web3 connection once again, because we're exporting it from there. And I am going to just say dot what? Signer. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Now we have that. Now I am going to approve, send that request because now I have the token smart contract uh, interface defined. I can then call the contract and do the approval. So I'm going to say approve transfer. Okay. And now we're going to say away token contract and we are going to say approve. Okay. That is the name of the function. And to who? Am I approving this transfer to the MasterChef contract address? We saw it right there, MasterChef address. And how much are we going to be approving? Well, guess what? Amount away. It's going to be the amount. Okay. Because again, if this is not matching on stake, then this amount, then it's used. And now after I do that, right, I am going to, by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to remove this. So you're not confused. I am going to do this. Okay. I am going to now do the following. I have to stop the process from continuing on until I get the approval confirmed because else is just going to continue trying to do the stake and it's not going to have approval and it's going to fail. So I have to make sure that this blockchain has confirmed the transaction and then I can go ahead and send the, uh, the stake function. So I'm going to say let's check this. Wait approval, right? It's very important. I am going to await approve transfer with wait. Okay, what that's going to do, it's going to await this from completing and then I can find it did then I can do the stake function. Very, very important. Okay. Else you're going to run into issues because the approval is not going to be met yet. And then yet you decided to continue doing the stake function. Okay. Now I'm going to say a condition here, wait approval. If that gets populated, right, it has data, then go ahead and do the same thing. But in this case, I am going to do this, right? I am going to do this copy and I just need to do a stake here. Okay. And that's about it. That's about it. Okay. Now we got the action. Now we can pass this along to the index page. So what I want to do, I'm going to control S. Let me format this. Boom, format it. Everything looks very clean. I'm going to save. And now let's go to the index and connect this action to the button. So we see the buttons right here. This is inside the model. Uh, now I got to do the following. I have to bring that action function back in. So I'm going to say action, right? And now we are going to define the function here that is going to send that into the config and then run the action function. Very important now. Now we need to know how we are going to export the information from the from the actual model. So let's go to the model. I need to be able to obtain this information when the user inputs the info. I have to grab that. I have to store that and I have to send that to the action. Remember, it's, it's expecting us to provide the amount. OK, so how do we do that? Let's go back. We are going to say the file. We are going to say input. You can see it right here. This is where we are going to be providing that information. OK, which means what? I should have an ID that I can mark this particular element and then export the information for that particular element. And it's going to be literally like this. When we did the stake model, remember at the beginning, we added the I for the card ID. So we can use this effectively, copy. So then we can pass this onto the input, right? In this case, I am going to be pasting the same here, but I have to change this to say amount, okay? Or something like that. Then I can capture that with the document, get element by ID. And then we will do the same thing as we were doing with the cards. And you are going to see this is not, it's not difficult, okay? So I'm just going to say amount, right? And we are going to say amount plus I, and what I'm going to do, it's now create a function to do the stake or on stake, right? We're going to do stake. I am going to be building stake. I, then I am going to do this. I'm going to say, by the way, this is async. I can now effectively shoot the amount. So the first thing that I got to define, I have to define the I, but I also have to provide the token address. Remember, that's another item that I have to be providing into the call. I have to be able to provide the amount and the action, okay? And the token address, which means that those two values, the I and the token address are inside the card because we're getting that from the get pool details, right? We're getting the token address right here. So we are just passing that here. So let me show you. So this will be I and then we'll see token address and you're going to see it. Okay. So now we are going to now obtain the amount from the user input in that field. Okay. So we're going to say document element get 
element by ID. And remember what was the element that we were passing along? It was going to be this right here, but it was amount, okay? So what I'm gonna do, we are just going to say this, but we are just gonna type amount, okay? And we just want to know the value, okay? Beautiful, cool, okay? Now we are doing the following. Now we can call that action function, okay? So we are gonna say let uh, result the same way. We are now going to await action. Now we are effectively calling action. The first parameter that I gotta pa pass, and you can see it right here, is gonna be i, then amount, then token address, and then the action, okay? So what I need to do, I have to be passing i, then the next value that I'm going to be passing is amount. You can see it right here. Now the third one is going to be the token address. So we're gonna pass token address. Right? And finally, the action. In order for me to match this to stake, I have to make sure that I pass as a string stake. Why? Or I can even do this. I can say no. Why? Because the only condition that I'm going to be matching is the unstake. Unless it's Unless it's on stake, it's just gonna fall here. So it's fine, I can just do no, and that should be fine, okay? So now that I do this, now I can effectively make the call to stake. It's just gonna pass this to stake. And now if the return of that result, I'm gonna say result equals true, meaning that it was successful, then I want to show something to the to the user in the model. I wanna show on stake completed or something like that, or stake completed, okay? So we're gonna say let output, we're gonna say the string of stake completed, okay? And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show this on the front end. I have to pass the value to the element, okay? Document get element by ID, and I'm going to say, result okay i got to make a diff object and then i got to pass result and then what is the value of result okay we're gonna say that it's an inner html because we're gonna be populating that with this information which is output okay so we're passing that output cool and that's it that's how we do the stake and guess what the only thing that i got to do for the unstake it's copy this paste i'm gonna say unstake okay same thing and here is where we change that we're gonna say here null on stake because again it's the same thing it's literally the same call the only difference is going to be this the other one is null but this one is matching on stake let me just make it consistent to be with double quotations here on stake okay and now i just have to say on stake completed okay beautiful and now let's go ahead and connect those buttons let's connect stake right and then let's connect on stake and remember we have to pass the token address which means that that is a value that i have to be passing onto this call okay and it's very simple let's go back to the button and we are going to go to the button right here and we're going to say on click what are we clicking we are going to be passing this to the stake function that we did but inside that stake function i am going to be passing the i value of the model which we already obtained and the token address how do we obtain the token address well remember we have it right here from the pool array all i have to be passing is this and changing this value here to be token address if we go back to the config token address oh it's like token address without the full word you got to make sure that you do that i'm going to copy let's go back to the index i'm going to say token addr and boom awesome and that's how we stake awesome and guess what now i'm going to grab the same value here and we are going to do the on stake and we should be good for, with those two i'm going to paste and now we're going to say on stake okay now we are effectively passing the pool id the uh, pool array the i and the token address and this will be on stake passing to this function that we just wrote okay the last function and we're done it's auto compound which is very straightforward okay let's go ahead and build it real quick and we will test everything so we have done the action function stake and on stake now i am going to do one to do it right here i'm going to say export constant auto compound okay and we're going to say equals async and boom 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 Okay, what we need, obviously, first of all, we need that wallet because we need to interact with the wallet once again. So we we'll say Web3 connection. And now we're going to say the MasterChef, the MasterChef contract, copy, let MasterChef contract. And now we're going to say let result, right? Await MasterChef dot what? Auto compound. And you might say, well, do we have to pass any values? No, it's only applying to pool zero, which means that I don't need to be passing any other function. It's only going to apply to pool zero. So it doesn't matter, you know, I, I don't need to pass any other uh, attribute or parameter 
it's, it's, it's zero. It's the only pool that allows this to happen. Okay. We're going to say auto compound and then I'm going to say then just to make sure that I finished. I'm going to say return true. Right. And then right here, I'm going to say return result. Right. So then we can capture that and we can show auto compound completed. And that's it. This is auto compound. Very simple. Control S to so go back to index. And now let's find the auto compound button. And you can see it right here. So first of all, I got to import that function out of compound. Okay. And now let's go down, 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 down. Okay, here we go. And we're going to say button on click. And we are just going to call this without passing any arguments, any parameters. I'm going to pass this auto compound and that's it. I'm going to say S and done. We are done. Okay. So let's test. So let's go ahead and refresh. Boom. Got updated. Awesome. Remember, we waited five seconds. Now we are going to be staking on this pool. There's nothing else. So let's go ahead and stake a thousand. Okay. So we are just going to pass a thousand and let's stake. There we go. First thing that is popping, it's the pre approval to approve the MasterChef contract from, sen from sending the tokens or transferring the tokens on my behalf. So I'm going to say next and I'm going to be approving that. Now remember, we told in the function that we are going to be waiting for that approval before we can do the next function, which is stake. So after this, I should be able to obtain another approve confirmation page to then approve the staking function. Okay. So let's wait for that. Boom. And we got the approval. Awesome. Boom. We got the stake. Cool. Now you can see it right here. We are going to be staking now. Press confirm. And you can see it's stake completed. Now we are waiting for the wallet to finish up and we should see it's staking. A thousand tokens. Okay. Boom. Got confirmed. Let's wait five seconds. Boom. One thousand tokens. And we can see that the value inside the wallet has dropped. And now we should start seeing this incrementing as we start generating rewards. We should see this incrementing. Okay. So let's go back and let's now do it on pool number two. So we have 400,000 USDT. I wish, <laughs> uh, let's stake 11,000, right? So we're going to be staking 11,000 and you can see that it's asking pre-approved moving that we're going to say next. Yes. We wait for that and we should be able to stake. Okay. Boom. We got staked USDT and now this should be updating to 11,000. Boom. Awesome. 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 And pending rewards. We already see some values and why we are seeing all those many numbers. Let's fix that. So that's half that has to do with the conversion to ethers, but we can append the fix and I can say two. So to fix, and then I can strip this to be two digits and we will show it in cleaner in a cleaner version. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back into the config and you can see also I'm generating rewards on the USDT pool. So what I want to do, I'm going to be changing this. So then it shows this without too much digits on the, on the right. Okay. So let's go back to config and let's go to config here and let's see in here, where are we getting that? Okay. We're getting this under user reward, right? So what I got to pass here, I'm going to say to fixed, I'm going to say two. That should take care of it. Okay. Control S. Boom. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay. So we are earning. Now let's do the following. Let's test auto compound and we are going to test on stake and we'll call it a day. Okay. So we're going to go to the open pool and we are going to auto compound for pool zero because it's the only pool that we are allowed to do that. So we're going to click auto compound and you can see it right here is being asked to confirm. We are confirming. Now we should be seeing those values being passed onto my staking because again, I'm restaking those tokens. Okay. There we go. And you can see also we have some formatting. Let's fix that. But you can see that it has transferred onto your staking. We have an unstaked. We just grab and auto compound that. Okay. So let's do that. And we got to fix this on the, uh, on the percentage rate. So we'll do that real quick. So let's fix my stakings. And also we'll just have to pass this. And you can see we already started generating new rewards. So I'm going to say on the on stake on the stake, I'm going to fix that. So let's do that real quick. And I am going to say user stake. Uh, we can see the value user staked here. So what I can do, I can strip at the end. So let's see if I can do that here. I'm going to say to fix. There we go. Clean, clean, clean. Awesome. And now let's fix the APY and, and we should be done. Let's first of all, let's do an on stake. Let's on stake. Uh, 2000. Okay. So let's go ahead and open the pool and let me type 2000. Let me hit on stake. And there we go. We are going to on stake. 
We're going to confirm. And now we have dropped 2000 from the staking pool back onto our wallet. And you should see everything this increasing and this, this one decreasing right here. Okay. There we go. Five seconds. Boom. Five seconds. And then we see this back onto our wallet. Awesome. Okay. So let's fix the formatting here, which is also has to do with that fix format. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to wrap this here. I'm going to say to fix too. And then let's refresh and looking good, looking, looking good. Okay. Yeah. Because it's a very small percentage now it's being fixed. Um, I'm wondering what is the raw value. So let me take a look at the raw value. Um, let's do this. I am going to remove this for a second. I'm going to say console log APR and I want to see that in screen. So I'm going to say this E one seven one seven one 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 E. I think the math is a little bit off. So let me do this back and I'm going to say, I'm going to say this, I think this has to be multiplied. So then we convert this onto percentage. See so, you now. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's yes, percentage, but here's the thing. Uh, this is not fixed. So let me fix that. So we can say, if I do to fix three, for example, I should be able to format that better. It's only going to be showing me two, two positions. There we go. Awesome. 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 And again, I'm staking a very little amount of tokens, yet I am passing all the values to a single user. The idea for this is to auto update when we have a lot of users doing the staking. But again, this is going to continue changing because as more users start staking, I have to distribute the, the, the same amount of tokens that I mine across all my members of this pool, which means that this is con constantly going to be fluctuate. We can do another function. We can do another formula that will have, let's say, a time frame. And I can say per day, if I am staking a thousand tokens, then this is the amount that you're going to be obtaining, right? And this is the percentage, right? It's up to you. You can go ahead and do a formula that will, you know, show this to be a fixed APR. If you're thinking of doing a lock staking, that is going to be a time-based staking, you can do this as well. Feel free. The code is going to be available on your GitHub. And once again, thank you for your support and thank you for sticking around and enjoying this full tutorial. Bye.